two formulas today. One is called geometric. Speaking of, it's a basketball example today. Okay. Um, we are going to show you two formulas. One is called geometric. Number two, I know I always mess this up and people that have taken French always correct me, but I always say Poisson, but I think it's Poisson. How do you say that? Who, who's, had, who's had French? It's French. It has Poisson. Poisson. Poi. I think it's Poi. You're laughing. It's like you know what it, how you would you say this? You don't know? Is that a U or a? That's P-O-I-S-S-O-N. I'm going to say poison. It sounds like I know it means fish. Somebody told me that it means fish. But anyway, it's French. It's poisson. Okay. What is it? Poisson. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Poisson. 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 Anyway, I'm sure I'm going to say it wrong. like fish? Okay. First thing. So what I would like to do, what I'd like to do is I'll give you all the formula for geometric. We'll do one word problem, and then we'll do the same for the other one. One word problem. We again, we can only really do one a day when we do these problems. Okay. First off, we have to go over some sub facts here for geometric. Okay. First off, for geometric. What it is, is your trials are repeated until success. We'll say first success. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep running this trial over and over and over until you get to your first success. Okay? Like our examples of basketball. You know, how many shots in a row do you have to shoot until you make your first free throw? Whatever it is, okay? You, it's like it's my two. first one. Okay, number one, or number two. Trials are always independent of each other, okay? If I miss my first shot, that, that does not affect me on my second shot. My, my trials are independent of it, okay? Um, our probability of success is the same for each trial. Okay. If I shoot, um, if I, if my free throw average is ninety percent, when I miss my first shot, I still have a ninety percent chance of making the next shot. Okay. Now, if you kind of think about it, though, if I miss like my first four shots and I'm a ninety percent shooter, you know. I would think my odds would be a little bit better that I'm going to eventually make one, or I, or I wouldn't be shooting 90%. So the probability of success is the same for each trial. Here is the formula. It's a very simple formula. It's P times Q raised to the X minus 1. Remember, P represents success. Q represents failure, just like last section. Is there a reflection or something? Yeah. How's that? Okay, so make sure you write down the probability of success, probability of failure, P's and Q's. I could probably show this. Do you the Jerry Green tournament yesterday? Guess what? I was talking to Mendy about your fashion. Yeah. And he said, that's crazy coming fingers in. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> How's that? Ew, yeah, that like better? better? Okay. <laughs> Here's an example. <laughs> I watched the Gonzaga game yesterday, or the other day. <laughs> so I'll give you a chance to judge this. 
So basketball player Anton Watson from the Gonzaga Bulldogs uh, last week shot a dismal 57% from the free throw line. I think, I think, uh, I think how Gonzaga is going to lose in the in March Madness is their free throws. They're terrible, and so um, in close games they end up losing because they miss so many free throws. But so find the probability that Anton's. First I can't see, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? Shot a dismal? Dismal. Dismal. Does it say dismal? Dismal. Uh, dismal. Dismal. Is it one L? Two L's? Okay, I'll give you a second to jot it down. So basketball player Anton Watson this last week, I forgot the word week, Last week, shot a right. dismal 57% from the free throw line. Okay, I would think that a college athlete, especially at the D1 level, should be in the 80s, at least. And he's at 57%. Terrible. Find the probability that Anton's first shot he makes is his third shot. So he's at the free throw line. He misses his first shot. He misses his second shot. So what's the probability that he's gonna make that third shot? That's the first shot that he makes, okay? Typically with him, he always misses the first shot, but he always makes the second one. That's what I've kind of seen, okay? All right, so let's go through and we'll do a couple of these problems and then we'll move on. But do you see that we're looking for the probability of his first success? That's how we know that this is geometric. And, and if you notice here, what's missing that we had in other word problems? Does it say anything about I randomly select 10 people to survey? No. That's how we tell the difference between this and what we did yesterday and the day before. Yesterday you were always, you were always had an N value. You always had the problem, you know, how many people were surveyed. We don't do that with this. Okay, so here we go. All I need to know is the probability of P, which is 0.57. So his chance of failure then is 0.43. Okay, so once I know those two values, I just plug it into the formula. I want to know the probability that his first shot he makes is 3. So that's how I would show that. The probability of x is equal to 3. His first shot he makes is his third shot. Okay, so here all, here's all you got to do. I'm going to go 0.57, the chance of success, times the chance of failure, 0.43, to the... 6 minus 1, or 3 minus 1. Just put that in your calculator, and you are done. That is the chance that Anton's first basket that he... Now, if you haven't calculated yet, do you think it's going to be higher than 57 or lower? What do you think? Just statistically, if you kind of think about it. I think, well, I think it's going to be higher. If he's missed his first two shots, I would assume that he's going to make his first, next shot is um, it's actually not what you think it's actually there's only a 10 percent chance of that happening here's why and, and i was kind of like most people are like well if he's missed his first two it makes sense that he's going to make his third one but here's why he should have made a shot by now this is highly unlikely that he would miss his first one, he would miss his second one, and then the first shot he makes is his third one. So it's highly unlikely because he would have already made one by now. Does that make sense? So it's kind of opposite of what you think. So if I said, what's the probability that his first shot that he made is his fifth shot? Well, he should have made one by now. He should have not missed four in a row. So you're telling me the probability of a missing four in a row is not very good. So look what happens if you calculate x equals four or five. It would be 0 0.57, 0 0.43 to the fourth. Five minus one. Okay. What do you got? 
one, one, one more one? Three ones. There you go. So there's only technically a 1.11% chance of that happening. He is not going to miss four free throws in a row. Okay, he should have made one by now, even with his bad shooting record. Okay, now, could I do questions like this? And I don't know if we need to work it out, but you know, I could word it that, what's the probability that his first shot he makes is before his third shot? Well, I would show that like this. What's the probability that the first shot he makes is before his third shot? So you would have to find the probability of one, the probability of two, and then do what with those answers? Add them up. Anytime you find an answer more than once, you always add them up, okay? So if this was the problem, then I would just summation that, and I would be done. Does every, every one of these ones not have a zero? Or just a zero? No, there would be no zero here because he's, he's not at the free throw. I know, but like, with this formula, Mm, I guess, I, I, I think we could somehow work it where, it wouldn't pertain to this example, but we could probably figure out one where zero would be an option. Okay. Yes? Value X is like how many like, trials you're doing, so like, it is like for... His fifth shot, that's X. Okay, yeah. Okay? All right, any questions off of this formula? Short and sweet, pretty easy little formula to do. P times Q, X to the X minus one. Again, this formula, you're looking for your first success. Okay, here's the other one. This formula is a little bit more complicated, um, but it could all be done on a calculator for you. Okay, this one, here's the formula. Well, I'll do it here in a minute. Let me do my sub points. Okay, um, the number of times an event occurs in an interval, okay? And this could be time, area, volume. Most of the time it's time, but, but anyway, it's, it's the number of times an event occurs in an actual interval. Same thing as before, the probability of X is the same for each event. The probability never changes. Events are independent of each other. So, so far, very similar to geometric. But here's the formula. This is the key. It's based off of a mean. I'll just say X bar. So, this is the only formula we have in this chapter in which you're given the mean. So when you're reading a word, word problem and it says the average number of accidents per intersection is this, you know it's this formula, okay? Because it's the mean. No other formula has the mean in it, so it's kind of easy to spot. Out of the three word problems, this should be the one that you spot right off the bat, okay? Now here's the formula. It is mu to the x times e to the negative mu all over x factorial. So the formula is a little bit more complicated, but we just gotta make sure we enter it right in our calculators, okay? So mu is our average. I know up here I put x bar, but it's based off of the mean, your average. X is the probability of your event. E is just a value on your calculator. You don't have to worry. It's just like pi. E has a value of 2.71, but I, I would rather have you just hit the E button on your calculator. Okay, hit the E button. And it should be right by the natural log button. Wherever LN is, that's where the E button is. Okay, there's mu again, and then X factorial. If I was saying four, it'd be four factorial. So we just gotta make sure we can enter everything correctly on this. Okay, give me a second. Let me write down an example. We'll work a couple problems out. Not 
つ。So, the mean number of accidents at a certain intersection is three. What is the probability that in a given, do I say month? Yeah. I'll give you a second to jot it down. The mean number of accidents at a certain intersection is three. What is the probability that in a given month four accidents will occur? So do you see that we're in an interval of time, a given month? Okay, so that's this problem. But who cares about that? The key word here is this. As soon as you see the mean, you know that we're doing this formula. Okay, so like I said, it's the easiest to spot out of all three of them. Whenever you see the word mean, we're going to run this. All right, let's label what we know real quick. So we know that the average is three. There are three accidents a month at this intersection. E is just E. We don't have to worry about that. And I'm asking you to find the probability that there is exactly four at this intersection. Again, I want you to always list that. Exactly four. X equals four. Okay, let's go to work. All right, so it's going to be three to the fourth power times e to the negative three all over four factorial. Now what I would do if I were you, when you enter this formula, since there's two things on the top, I would enter just the top and then hit enter. Then press divide, four factorial. What's what? Got it? Okay, take a minute, run that through, let's see what you get. But if you don't hit enter after you enter the numerator, then you have to put it in parentheses. Wait, what? Where do you get E? Where do I get what? Oh, E is on my calculator. If you notice the LN button right, by, right to the left of seven and four, up above in blue. So press second, natural log. So on mine, press second, natural log. And then negative three? And then it'll be raised to the negative three. So after you enter that, press enter, and then just divide by four factorial. Yes? Yep. So four times three, now some people, if it was me, I would just do four factorial in my head. Four times three times two is 24. Four times three is 12, times two is 24. You know, but if, if you're dealing with bigger numbers like 9 factorial, then definitely do that. Okay? There we go. So you're telling me that we average 3 a month. The chance of 4 is only 16.8%. Okay? Look, notice how fast it's dropping down. Okay? Not a high chance, you know, when our average is 3. You'd think it'd be a little bit higher, but we only average 3. Okay? Now, what if I said this? What is the probability that there are fewer than three accidents at that intersection? Fewer than three. What numbers would satisfy this now? Two, one, two. Two, one. Does zero mean zero here? Yes. I mean, we could have no accidents that month. So in this case, zero is used because zero can definitely happen. Okay, no accidents at all. Okay, and what would I do with all these answers once I find them? You would summation them. Okay. Here's one that messes people up on this kind of word problem. Where if I said, hey, what's the probability of more than three? The probability of more than three. Where do we stop at? I mean, do we go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Isn't this just technically go on forever? I mean, I know it's not doesn't seem like it, but maybe there's a hundred accidents in a month, okay, of whatever, whatever reason. So when you have a problem like this, these problems have no limit. They go on forever. So what you would have to do on this problem is you would have to go one minus 
the probability of everything else. You would have to do this. I would have to find 0, 1, and 2, everything else. Actually, I'd have to find 3, too. Here, I'll do this to make it easier. So what's the probability that there's three or more accidents per month? Okay, I would have to find everything else. I would find 0, 1, and 2, add them all together, and go 1 minus that. You can't do this forever because it could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 5, it could be 10, it could be 20, it could be 30. I know it doesn't seem realistic, but it could happen. Okay? Any questions about that? Alright, so we have three formulas now. We have this one, we have this one, and we have this one. That's what your test is next week. I just give you all these different word problems. You figure out which formula to use and you run it. Okay? Just memorize these three things. Okay? Let's try two problems. Just two. Hopefully you can still get it done before you leave. When's our bell ring? Quarter tail? Oh, we could do three. Oh, you said two. I thought the bell rang at 35. Yeah, I heard my greatest try, though. Whatever. Let us take a look. Yeah, I need a break. Let's do a brain break. How about a one, actually? Oh, this is the best question the whole year. We're going to do this one. Here we go. Here's the question. I know you can look it up here. <laughs> I know what my option would be in a second, but we'll see what your guys' are. 29% of Americans aged 16 to 21, kind of your guys' age group, said they would break up with their boyfriend or girlfriend for $10,000. Hell yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> you randomly select seven 16 to 21 year olds. Find a probability that whatever is less than that. Would you do it? Wait, Ten well, grand? Said, said yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd do it in a second. <laughs> your wife? You wife. I didn't, you didn't say that. I, I'm I 16 say years it. of I age. Right now. It, was it right now? No. In high school? Because we actually started dating in high school? Yes. You went on a blind date in high Maybe school? Was yeah. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but if, but I didn't really know her. I would have taken ten thousand dollars in a heartbeat. It's no brainer. Now ten thousand is not a lot of money nowadays. Wait, that's so. actually not that much. Ten thousand nowadays. Oh, in high school. If I was in high school, but like, if somebody came up and offered you like a million, I don't know if I'd do it. It's my wife. <laughs> I've been yeah, ten, sure no. <laughs> like ten million. You think you'd be set? Wait, do you? Are you able to like? Another quick question: Can you remarry them? No, you no. cannot get back together ever. Thanks. Or you have to pay the money. Plus, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't really like want to. No. Maybe that's what I do. Ten million dollars. Say, hey, we're just not going to see each other for five years. Let's get some interest out of it. Then I'll pay it back and we'll get back together. See, that's smart thinking right there. Yeah. I would say. You know, I'm just saying this. No, you can't go back. Never? No. Never ever. No, or you have to pay the money back. Nah. It's like your friends with money. So. Uh, <laughs> Good question. Okay, but we can't do that one because it's a different problem. I would like you to look at these two problems. Wait, let me find some easy ones. I know. I want it now. Now. It's going to be on two twenty. I'm finding you easy ones. Two problems, one of each. We're going to do 11 on, what page? on two, 220. So page 220. <clears throat> 11, and we will do. Do we want to do a Tom Brady question? No. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to do newspaper errors? No. 
Uh, I do song grade. Uh, song grade. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what's the next one? Oh, Tom, you went this one because it's, and we'll do 15 because there's not a lot of calculations. All right, there's your two questions today. Um, if I kind of, uh, while you're kind of getting set up, here's 11. The probability that you will make a sale on any given telephone call is 0.19. Find the probability that you will make your first sale on the fifth call. Is that geometric or is that Poisson? It's geometric. Do, were you given the mean? Absolutely not. So you know it can't be that. And so, and aren't you looking for your first success, your first sell on a phone call? And so that's why that's geometric. Okay? Wait. You only have a 19% chance of making a phone, or making a sell on a phone call. Which is good, because I hang up on people as soon as they call. Uh, which one's geometric again? <laughs> okay. 11 and 15. Oh, we don't 11 and 15. Which one's geometric? No. Which one did you just say is geometric? I read off 11. All right, so make sure you do this for me. Uh, make sure you state whatever it is they're asking you to find. I think the first question is exactly five. So X equals five. Run the formula and then just give me the answer. Three non-zero decimals, okay? We'll do that, we'll do the breaking up question on Monday. Ten grand is a high school kid's a lot of money. Not really. I need a new car. Tyson wouldn't do it. Yes, I would. No, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. For ten grand. I do. I do. I do. She do. I wouldn't do it. Now, how old would Tyson would do? Tyson would do. You think I would? Because he gets everything paid for. Hmm. Anyway. Wait, I would. He goes, I'll pay you 